Hello, and welcome back to Harriet's Custom Computer Plus. If this is your first time stopping by, thank you. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the like button. Also hit the bell if you'd like to be notified the minute I have up new tutorials. If you like the software that I'm using in most of the tutorials, uh, which is Microsoft Picture 2000, feel free to contact me on either of my pages on Facebook at uh, Harriet's Custom Computer Art Plus or Harriet's Custom Computer Art Templates and more or Harriet's Custom Computer Art Quick Assist and request the software link and I will send you the free link to download the software. I am now going to start working on from start to finish making supplies for a Valentine's Day paint and sip party. Um, this has been requested by a lot of subscribers so hopefully you'll enjoy. Uh, first of all you would want to find an image that uh, might be I guess uh, something that male or females would like to paint if it's going to be for Valentine's Day maybe there's some couples paints that will be going on or private sessions so I uh, found this image which is a, a Celtic heart or Celtic heart based on who's saying it I guess and I'm going to change it into try to change it into something that either men or women might like to paint or couples so um, you want to look for images that won't take a long time to paint for your paint and sip parties uh, for kids you would want something that was even more basic than this first of all I'm going to I found this as a coloring page I put in Celtic hearts um, free Celtic heart coloring pages and to Google and they give you plenty of images you click on the tab that actually says images and it will show you all of the uh, different images and then you just scroll through look for the ones that are free and there um, choose one and right click on the image choose copy and then just come into Microsoft picture it open up a blank page by going to file new and then you can change it to whatever size you want it to be. I'm making this one 8 by 10 portrait to fit on uh, some flat canvases that you'll be seeing in, in uh, the next segment of this tutorial. And then I'll hit done. And all you would do is hit right here where it, it has a little clipboard. And if you uh, hover over it, it will say paste. And then it will bring in that image that you just uh, copied from the internet. Then all you need to do is resize it on your page, make, making sure that you're not cutting off any of the corners. Always resize from the corner because that keeps your picture in the correct proportion. I repeat that in a lot of tutorials and I'll show you why. If you pull from there, it, it, it will be make your proportions off. So if by chance you accidentally do resize from anywhere besides a corner, just hit the back arrows here at the top and it will bring you right back to where you were. I think the back arrows go back about 11 steps so you can make a lot of you know mistakes and then click back through the uh, back arrows until you get back to where you want to be. Alright, so the first thing we're going to do because I didn't bother to look for PNGs uh, so this has a, a white background on it and um, so I'm going to start by cutting out just the outer white background and I'm going to go to uh, cut out in picture cut out of picture which is that first choice and then I'm going to choose by color selection and that will allow me to choose particular colors to pull out and as you can see once I click outside it's taken out that whole outer ring on those but for this we just need the outer edge cut out so I'm gonna click next and now I want to keep this part that's inside so I'm gonna choose select opposite area and then it makes the inside bold so now I have this heart shape and I want to cut it out again because I want to use this heart shape to make a smaller heart for our project here today. So I'm going to go to cut out a picture, cut out a picture once again. This time I'm going to choose with a cookie cutter shape and I can choose a circle, square, whatever the main thing. I just want to get outside of the edges of the heart because I want to just grab that in order to uh, 
use it to enhance this graphic. So now I hit next and then I'll hit done. And now you see I have two layers. So the top layer is the one that I just made. So I'm going to shrink that one down some and I'm going to change it to white by going to paint and color effects fill with the solid color. It changes it to red but I want it white so I'm going to click outside in this area on the on the canvas so that it changes it back to white and then I'm going to hit done and now I'm going to resize this heart and place it right here let me see if that's as big as I want it yeah that works and now I want it to have a black outline so that it looks like it fits into this image like the rest of the lines outlines so I'm going to go to edge effect highlight edge I'm going to click here on the thick edge and you see everything defaults to red when you go to any type of color in here so you'll change that within the custom settings right here it says customize the edge so I'm going to click customize the edge of that edge by clicking on this slider and you can either type in a negative number or a positive number to make it uh, larger or smaller in my case I'm just going to slide it all the way down to minus 100 and I'll zoom in a little bit to see if I might want to bring it up a little bit more you can thicken it that edge to make it mimic the other lines just by increasing increasing the, the uh, number by clicking up on this little arrow so now that's good enough for me that looks pretty good next I want to add uh, a personalization uh, if you're making these for a couple and you want to put their names on it uh, you can do that so I'm going to personalize this one by going to text add text I'm going to change my font to one that looks, I guess, romantic. So I'm going to, once I click on this little uh, arrow down here that drops the menu, I'm going to click A because I know the font that I want to use begins with an A. So anytime you click on that arrow and you put in, if you know the name of your font, an L or whatever, it will take you to that section of the font so you don't have to scroll through all of them to find what you want. But if you're not sure of which one you want, feel free to scroll through because it will show you uh, the different, all the different fonts that are, are available in your software. So I know that I want to use um, an A a font that begins with an A and now I just need to scroll through or is it a B? It might be a B. I'm forgetting. Yeah, I think I'm on actually I'm on my laptop instead of my desktop and so I have different fonts on different uh, different ones. So I'm going to look for a, a font that's similar to what I was looking for. It was, I'll use Brush Script instead of uh, Amazon. Th those are similar fonts. So I'm going to take this up Change it and Kathy. Taking off the capitals. Oops, why am I still in cap? There we go. I just updated this computer to Windows 11 and I see it has a few glitches because I have the cap lock on and it's printing, I mean, it's typing in small letters. So uh, I don't know if anybody else has uploaded or downloaded the new Windows 11 but uh, I like the way it looks but right now it's having an error so I'm not sure what's going on with that All right. so that's Kathy and Trevor and then um, you could put here I think I'll put uh, like a marriage date so I'm going to go once again to text add text and I'm going to change this one to what a lot of I see a lot of times established so I'll put EST and then I'll do a separate text uh, box because I want to make these two different sizes so I'll resize this one a little bit put it there and then I'm going to make one more text box go text add text and then type in 1980 and done 
And then I'm going to resize this a little bigger. I should have turned that off so it wouldn't interrupt. All right. So now let me get these where I want them. Pull this established down some. And I'll make it a little smaller. It doesn't have to be that big. And just try to, I'm just kind of trying to kind of center everything by eyeballing it. I think I should have waited to update when I wasn't doing a tutorial because it's doing some weird things. But hopefully you'll still be able to follow along. And then at the bottom, I'm just going to do another text box, add text. And I'm going to put forever love. Okay. And I'll drag that down here to the bottom. Try to center it. Enlarge it from the corner. Now all you have left to do is to make it where the font can be painted as well. So I'm going to click on the first font, right click, hit edit text. I'm going to change it to white. Hit done. Go to edge effect. Add the solid edge, the thick edge. Hit customize, change it to black and then drag your slider all the way down to zero. Hit done and done. And you're going to do that for each text box. You want to save this as a JPEG if you're going to print it on heat transfer iron-ons, which is what I'm going to be doing it on iron-ons for dark colors. If you want to take it into Cricut and cut it out in vinyl, you would want to save it as a PNG. So I'm going to go to File, Save As. I'm going to change the format from Picture It. I'll do PNG first. So you're going to scroll all the way down until you see Portable Network Graphic. You're going to click that. You're going to give it a name. I gave it Heart P for Heart PNG and save it. I already had saved it, but I'll just show you it again. And now to save it as a JPEG so that I could print it out on my transfer sheet. You could print it as a PNG on your transfer sheet if you want, but this is just another way to save your files if you like. So I'm going to choose Save As. I'm going to change it to a JPEG. And instead of the P, I'll change it to a J. I usually um, put whatever format. I'll put the first initial of that format at the end of the name and save that one as well. When you're ready to print, all you have to do is go to the directory where you saved your image. I saved mine to the desktop. Click on your drop down menu to, to choose print. At this point, you can choose whichever printer you'd like to use. I also wanted to make sure that I change it to the right format, either portrait or landscape. In my case, it was uh, portrait mode. I changed the size to 8 by 10 because my uh, Canvas boards are 8 by 10. Then I chose which format I wanted to print it in, whether I wanted to print in presentation mat or just on plain print. Either one will work for black and white images. Whenever I'm doing color images, I always print on presentation mat because it makes your colors more vibrant and it makes it for a sharper transfer. Then all you have to do is hit the print. Now to make your do-it-yourself easels, 
I take three skewers and two rubber bands. I stack the skewers together and attach one end of the skewers using the rubber band. Wrap it around tightly so that they stay in place. Next, you're going to take three of the large craft sticks and you're going to run a line of glue down the middle of one and then sandwich it with the second craft stick. Make sure to line them up and press all the way down both craft sticks to make sure they're adhering completely. Next, you're going to put some glue down the side of both the craft sticks that you've glued together. And this is going to be where you're going to attach the third large craft stick, which will be the little lip that holds the painting that's on the canvas, that holds the canvas. And you're gonna press, try to keep it at a 90 degree angle. And then you can just rub off any extra glue that was squeezed out. Next, you're going to take your skewers and you're going to spread them in the shape of a triangle and you're going to attach your large craft sticks to the front two skewers. So I'm just going to put a little glue near the bottom of each one of these skewers that are in the front and I'm just going to press and hold my little, I guess I'll call it the, the canvas tray. I'll press and hold it, and then I'll put some glue on the other side, stretch that one out, and then press that against the large craft sticks to make up my tray for my canvas. You just have to hold this a little while until it sets up a bit. And you can already see the form that it's taking. Once this has cooled enough, you're going to take the two smaller craft sticks And you're going to put them in a V shape. And I'm just measuring it, measuring because I want to put them so that they are extended as long as I can get them behind the easel. You'll see that they're, uh, right now I have it on the front edge, but I'm going to move them all the way back. I'm just trying to get the angle that I need to uh, go with right now. So I'm just going to put a little glue here. And then I push them together and you have a little time to make adjustments. And I'm going to size it up again against the bottom of my canvas tray. Next, I'm going to put a little glue Oh, before I put glue on there, I'm going to cut out a little notch at the end. So I'm going to get my X-Acto knife and cut out a little notch because this is where the third stick the third stick of the easel 
will lock into this little triangle that I'm cutting out in the back of these two pieces. You might have to cut through twice since it's a uh, double, the sticks are doubled, but it's really easy to cut through. And try not to split, you know, try not to split it further than it, it needs to go. Just be kind of careful when you're cutting out that notch. And now everything is cooled down a bit. I'm going to put that little V under the third leg of the easel and push it up. And then you'll see how I glue it to the base of the canvas tray just by putting a little glue on each one of those tips. And then I'm going to push that. The farther you push the third skewer back, the more of a lean you will have for your canvas to lean against. I could have pushed this back a little more, but it still worked out great. But if you want it to go back uh, further, just push those up. Just make sure you leave enough surface from the the smaller skewers. I'm, I'm sorry. Make sure you leave enough surface from the smaller craft sticks to uh, make contact with the canvas tray so that it will uh, it will stay in place and won't won't uh, break off. So now you can either leave this unglued or you can glue it. I chose to glue it in because the the um, more of the little skewer you have hanging over in that cutout where I made the V-shaped cutout, the more of a lean the easel will have to hold the canvas better. And this literally takes 10 minutes to make. I just came up with this idea because I didn't want to buy easels. And so I thought, hey, make them out of craft sticks. And then I thought of the skewers and worked out perfectly. So you can make 10 of them in an hour or, or a little over an hour. Once it dries, you'll see the final easel. I'm just reinforcing it with a little more glue. It was taking a little longer to, to cool off and I wanted to um, set it aside so you can use a piece of tape to tape it in place until the glue completely cools and move on to your next easel. And there's the finished easel.
Here is just a bonus design that you might want to try if you find an image that is a little too busy. You can just cut away what you don't want to use by going to cut out in picture, cut out of picture by tracing on my own. And then all you do is take the cursor and trace out the part of the image that you want to keep. I chose to just keep the, the rose and the heart inside of that border, busy border. And then I personalize it by adding Trevor and Kathy on the tape or the scroll that goes across it. So it comes out looking like a tattoo rather than just a busy image. So you can do this with any image you find. Just cut out the parts that you want to use by using the cut out a picture by tracing on your own. And you'll see, I'll just delete the lower layer, which will take the border away. And now I'm left with just the tattoo image. And I'll add text by going to text, add text. I'll change it to the font that I want to use and insert it into the scroll and then used I used then I used the function bend text to bend the text so that it curves along with the scroll effect and you'll see the finished the finished image with the names added So now when you're ready to iron on, 
these are the canvas boards that I use. They come in a pack of 12 from Walmart for $13, $12.99. Um, and you just remove the plastic. As you can see, it's a, it's a real canvas. It's real canvas, but it's just applied to a board instead of a frame. And it makes it perfect for ironing on iron-on transfers or if you're doing the vinyl it makes it perfect for um, adhering the vinyl as well now when I printed out the image that uh, we were going to use for <laughs> this uh, example unfortunately my Epson printer had updated and I didn't realize it so when I sent through my last transfer for dark colors it printed the Epson message on there saying that I had updated my printer so I still printed the image on there just so that you would see how it works. And then uh, since these are eight and a half by ten, I'm sorry, eight by ten um, boards, I would trim this down to eight by ten so that it fits perfectly on the board. And then once it's trimmed down, just peel it off. You just start from any corner. I don't have good nails but you start from any kind of corner and it literally just peels off of the backing paper it has a little waxy waxy uh, feel to it and then you just lay this on your canvas board straighten it out and line it up with the corners take your heat press and I pressed mine for 15 seconds to start I I did it on 330 but I pressed it for um, 15 seconds, 10 to 15 seconds, and then I put the uh, heat press aside, and I just kind of flicked up the edges to see if they were coming up. If they came up, I pressed for another five seconds, and then put the heat press aside, checked again, and usually between, definitely between the uh, 15 to 20 seconds, they had all adhered to the board. So, and the board gets pretty hot when you uh, use the heat press with it. So be careful of that. Don't handle it right away once you take the heat press off because it will be very hot. And it, t it actually takes a little time to cool down. It might take about five minutes to cool down. It'll still be hot to the touch for a bit. So don't put them on, you know, any plastics or anything so it won't stick to it. And that's what you do. That's all you do for uh, transferring the iron-on transfer to your canvas canvas boards. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial on how to set up for a paint 